Welcome to Happy Chthonian, I'm Kristoff, and you are watching an actual play video of our ongoing Ultraviolet Grasslands campaign. The last time we did Session Zero, now we're doing Session One here. It's a two-parter, uh, each part's about two and a half hours long, uh, covering the whole session. Last video, Session Zero, was mostly character and caravan creation with a little gameplay at the end. You might want to go back and look at that. This one starts with a little character creation as we get a new player come on board, and then it goes off on an adventure. In this one, the party uh, leaves from the high, roll, the high road and the low under the crumbling coral viaducts uh, towards the pot shard crater where someone gets their foot pierced and nearly dies, but ends up getting a super leg. Uh, and then they meet with a crazy prince, they get a giant cake that looks like a car, and then they go to the porcelain citadel, where they meet the creepy, creepy porcelain princes. All right, it's an ongoing thing. If you want to see the upcoming episodes, subscribe. I think that's all I have to say. I hope you find this video fun and edifying. Now, here it is. Clovis, last game I read a blurb. Okay. about the ultraviolet grasslands, which I can read again, unless somebody else wants to popcorn-style read this blurb about our ultraviolet grasslands. I'm going to run... I'll run logistics. <laughs> you want to run right. the narrative stuff? Yeah, and then we bed. should get you rocking on a character. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I... I neglected to read that super long text he sent out, summing up last time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that in a few words, too. How do you want this? Should we do, like, Hollywood epic narrator? Should we do um, old-timey radio? Should we Wizard do... Wizard people, dear reader. Classic, what was that um, trailer guy's name? Oh. Basement nerd D&D. Oh. I like uh, Donald LaFontaine. I don't know. He was the guy that used to be in the world. <laughs> I like old time. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's a game of Oregon Trail. <laughs> Set in the poetic post 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 apocalyptic milieu of psychedelic heavy metal. It's a long, <laughs> strange trip in a mythic land of lost time, broken space, and deep distorted rifts. It's a sprawling grassland, sporadically peopled by a rainbow of post-humans and abmortal beings, born of ancient megatechnical fantasyance. They eke out survivalistic lives, low a black flowing radioactive smog, atop the shattered and overgrown wreckage of the psychic conflicts of the long ago, and the long, long ago. Eras sealed by the scar tissue of melted space time. Caravans wow. struck through soul warping <laughs> storms and braved the threat of source corrupted violent biomex in order to sell the products of the civilized rainbow land to the Circle Sea. The necrotic droppings of the violet cat lords, the vampire wines from the fleshy vineyards of the Redlands, and by the raw materials of the irradiated steplanders. Seed bricks from the ribs of the father. Essential for Chethromancers <laughs> to transforming environs into shapeful living stone. Glowing radioactive fruit from the gardens of the polybody princes. The rare crystal feathers of ultraviolet birds. Oh. A popular needle drum. <laughs> for diverse reasons, you've banded together to try your hand at the caravan game and to trip adventurously through the steps. Perhaps one day your caravan will employ professional necroambulists for easy upkeep zombie and skeleton porters and meat one transports. Or lay claim to one of the Vex, towering ancient living flesh machines capable of carrying huge loads. Or maybe you'll recruit a fearsome warband with scouts on metal steeds, warriors on road yachts, and wicker steel auto wagons darting around a central doom laser mounted war engine. To begin, you've assembled a few thousand in cash, enough to secure some wicker and aluminum carts and llama ponies, and hopefully turn enough of a profit to pay back your Rainbow Lander patron's loan and its 100% annual interest. Now, get out there and trip! <laughs> and trip! Nice. Thank you. Okay, wicker? Uh, yeah. <laughs> wicker steel, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> To that wicker, it's like it's wickered together, but it's yeah. made of steel. Oh, I see. Or aluminum. Steel banded. So this is a, a, a horse drawn caravan or a diesel drawn caravan? Ours is drawn by. Yeah. Oh, okay. Combination of 
Horses and llamas? Or horses and camels? Mules. The goal was a stupid amount of camels. Camel, mule, camel. We were talking about... Goat pony. Going to get... Two carts and um, Yelga, the solar-powered battle camel. Yeah. Oh. Battle camel. <laughs> yeah. Like the robot camel? Got a little bit of an upgrade. Or side grade, were, depending on your views on <laughs> you biometrics and stuff. Uh, taking all the drugs we could get in town mm-hmm. and going to sell them and trade them for all the camels we could get. Oh, okay. Not actually loading the camels with anything. Oh, okay. And I spent all our money on camels. And then on the way back to the city... Just find something to put on the camels. <laughs> to see what comes our way. Okay. Put our camels to carry whatever we, whatever we can find. <coughs> the caravan's motto is a thousand camels. Camels first. Oh, later. Later. At worst, we can sell the camels. We randomly uh, rolled characters. <laughs> okay. So it's a D100, and I'll tell you what it is. No, at worst, we're the camels. Is yeah, this your system, system or is this a... Yeah. Good question. Ooh. The system is Special mine. Computer. It's described briefly here, and I also have a packet with rules, but it's a mashup of the tower, which we've used before, oh, okay. and just the UVG kind of ideas. Oh, okay. So I got a 97. 97, the one is 47 is... Oh, my gosh. A Redland Vintner Aristocrat Surgeon. Whoa. Appropriate for our party. Yes. Redland Vintner Aristocrat Surgeon. So you can write that. You can have a name and then in any any spot where you can keep track of it or there. Your Red character Land. could be sent by our boss to help us. What is a Vintner? Vintner's um, um, who makes wine. Yep. Although oh. In this case, um, wine for vampires, so it might be a little different flavor. Uh-huh. Blood wine. Exactly. I'm going to see if there's a bit of the red one. It might be just (laughs) blood. Yeah, the Redlands are run by uh, an aristocratic uh, republic that's based on vampires. vampires, The Redlands is up there kind of to the um, far. It's right off the map. Okay. Um, Wait, so I'm a vampire? uh, Redland Vintner Aristocrat Surgeon... Um, you could be, could be a uh, vampire. I'll leave that to you. Aristocrat. Aristocrat. I don't think so. No, as long as you get a aristocrat. Aristocrat. Surgeon. Surgeon. Okay. So you're from a uh, vampire land where the yeah some of the earth is meat, so it's easy to get blood grapes out of it. Um, and there are some of the there. earth is meat. <laughs> <laughs> There's just layers of dead. Mm-hmm. You know how it'd be. Sure. <laughs> Aristocant surgeon. So we'll figure out what that means as we roll the rest. Okay. okay. Two more results. Eighty-four. Eighty-four again. Is Fifty. Is thirty-four. You have, why are you on the road? You met a seer, and now you have a compulsion to uh, do the caravan thing. You met a seer, and now you have a compulsion. A compulsion? Like a, like a oracle? Yeah, yep. You're not the one, kid. <laughs> and then one more roll to see what do you have, what do you bear? 90, or no, 62. 62. All right. And this will go in one of these slots of your okay. physical inventory. Four brassy cogs from a soul mill. So brass soul mill cogs. And soul mills are from way back when, just like you would think, take in souls, put out badass magic shit. Um, most people think they're really bad news and evil and mo- a lot of them have been destroyed over the millennia uh, the mills yeah. have been destroyed yeah is there a market for <laughs> cogs oh dude <laughs> if you if you come to a broken soul mill you could repair them if you wanted to sell them you could find probably in the who'd be into soul ask around and you All can right. find somebody who's interested in the soul mill i guarantee it <laughs> soul mills just ask were, about it. <laughs> soul mills were uh uh, magic uh, gathering th- or manifesting things? 
Yeah, I think I got a, a glossary packet oh. here. Let me go so you can browse through. But soul mill, soul mill. Nightmare machine from the long, long ago. Thought to be elven or vile creation. Elves and vials might be the same thing. That takes the actual souls of living humans and sometimes other soul-bearing forms and renders them into visceral energy. Most shamans consider it an abomination that brings closer to the final entropy, en entropy, or the descent into gray. Still, the power harvested is immense. Scholars speculate that the mist obscuring the long, long ago resulted from the overuse of industrial soul milling. In game turns, any hero or crystal creature processed through a soul mill is gone forever. Their very deeds and memories doomed to leech away into oblivion. Dark. Yeah. So it's basically turning human souls into energon cubes? Yes. <laughs> There used to be an industry for it. Is it so it's Elvin made though, it doesn't have anything to do with the way it plays. Right. It might be from ruins in the Redlands. Because the elves used to you know, be all over the place. Okay. Uh, so what else do I need? A name? You don't have to think of it now, but example names for typical for people from the Redlands are Kozarin Suburberin. <laughs> Colon Duke Marbeck, Perrin Duke Pinor, Namor Rinfosk, Ampho Saterin, and Toron Valpin. And then there are nine optional tables. I think y'all both use all of these. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was great. I filled out the character for you. It's, it's going to take me a minute to get in this mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. It's, it's a thing. It's a whole other thing. Uh, I, like you, I haven't had good sleep lately, so... Um, yellow names. From the yellow land. Um, Around the rainbow sea. Oh, okay. Here. As always. Yes, you're welcome. Some to, brought some as well. Oh, so I roll for these? Yep. You can to help you fill out your character and get some more ideas. Don't have to. Choose what you can be helpful. That's what you just rolled on to begin. Oh, okay. Hmm. These are six siders. Oh, okay. So the, our patron just happens to be known as a seer. <laughs> You're totally right. <laughs> throw that out there. A seer? Yeah. What's that? Anyone else like coffee or tea? Like uh, oh, coffee. tea. Mm -hmm. oh I'll take coffee. coffee. Yeah. What did I do with the sugar? One of those mint teas. All right. Thank you. Oh my god, there's coffee. Coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love coffee. I should have thought of coffee before. Oh. Yeah. You're going to join this caravan, which, as mentioned, they're taking drugs out there, going to bring back llamas, and they are financed. We're going to say you have the same financier, Mamie. Okay. Yeah. Um, they're a satrap, which means they wear this like neon colored, two bi colored spacesuit, and you never see their face, and it has like a cool chrome reflective, and they speak like this. Um, we don't know they're robots. <laughs> Are they robots? Well, you may like, one that didn't speak like this, but this does. It's like they have like some sort of what do you call it, like a box caster thing? Because they what was it? You, the oh, picture like you a, showed us was like like an astronaut suit, like one of those. It's like a, maybe an alien with a translator or something. Mm -hmm. like they're fun. From what we've experienced with one guy who did a light show, it's weird and foreboding, but they're fun. <laughs> and it's uh. It's a neon world, I guess. It's a black light responsive world. Yes, <laughs> you are correct. Nice. <laughs> if the further out you go, you see these uh, little teardrops say times on them. That's when the sun comes out. And the closer you get to the black city, here the sun doesn't even rise above the black haze of smog and doom until 3 p.m. But out there, you get a normal kind of, uh, and that's where y'all are from. Oh, we're from way up here. Right? Yep. This is war. In the green circle? Yep. That's the sea around which all of the civilized lands make their cities. Okay. 
Did we decide on who the map carrier was last time? That we need to do. If they get disintegrated, the map goes bye bye. So apparently, the map goes with a literal thing. <laughs> um, I was saying with the financier, they're one of these say traps, and his name is Seer. So it might make sense to make him the person who got you into this. He's a lone. Most of the say traps are way out here where it gets really weird. Uh, but he's all the way over there, which is odd. Uh, but he's part of a group that wants to build a uh, factory. Oh, a rebuild an, an old, maybe, maybe. <laughs> they want to rebuild an old tech, quote-unquote, an old tech factory because they run a military-industrial complex museum. So this would be, like, you know, a great a great testament to that. Sure. Um, there, there are some anarcho-capitalists that don't like this and are kind of opposing them, but they haven't really come onto the scene yet. Uh, this satrap looks different than other ones. There's something about his body that's... Uh, as, I, as we mentioned, he's like synthetic. He's made of mm. crystal. Um, so. Oh, so we've seen his like, hands. And... Yep, you see his hands under his suit and his head, which again, is usually they're totally her hermetically sealed, but sure. it's got like a totally crystal body. Uh, Joe had a theory that he's sending his consciousness to like a separate crystal. Mm. Now, behind the museum, who's funding him, and this is apropos to you, is the Royal Republican Imperial Society. The oh, okay. there, it's the Redlands. And they... Right, you did so, the party did some research to figure out what their motivations are, and uh, they hope to have some fun out of this. If they make that, if uh, Seer makes this factory, it's going to be fun for them. Maybe some chaos will happen. Maybe a new war. They love it because they live forever when they get bored. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hope to gain valuable pets and mood altering plants. That's right. Yeah. The vampires do. Yeah, mood altering. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's yeah, well, content pets money. There's might some, be, uh, you know, yeah. some drugs then, in this world. Maybe they get they get off on the blood that they get from oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. mood-altered pets. You, 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 you get the human to shoot up and then the vampire gets <laughs> the blood. Oh, that that's was, nice. That was on, uh, uh, what's that show? Angel. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. that was Angel, yeah. yeah. That's so good. Like, I know it's a familiar concept. All right, loyal old friend. One of us gets turned into a Muppet at any point in time. That's going to be great. Speaking of just the angels. There's a system called uh, Electric Bastion Land. Have you heard of it? No. Nope. I haven't about. heard of a lot of systems. This, it has this one's on his leg. That's amazing. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no further context required. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, thank you so much. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I just, the job. I just have not been sleeping in the last couple of weeks, I guess. Hard sleep. Yeah, I usually don't have that much problem sleeping, but it's just like last night fell just fell asleep at like nine thirty, woke up at three, couldn't mm. get back to sleep. Oh, I did that. I did that a couple times this week too. Mm. It's like four a.m. I woke up at three tonight. Maybe it was the solar storm calling me. I had no idea. I just went back. You guys know astrology as well? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Someone was saying that's like there's all sorts of crazy shit going I'm on. Happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, lovely. Mercury's, Mercury's in retrograde, which it always is. Right. <laughs> it's always it's retrograde. Every couple months. Punching everybody in the face. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a bunch of other shit going on too. You know, Ad, this morning I had stuck in my head and was compelled to listen to it. I listened to it on my bike ride. Uh, That's your horoscope for today by Weird Al Yeek. Oh, really? <laughs> so this is a synchronicity. We're coming oh. back to it. Oh, is that that's a that's a song? Yep. I thought I thought he was doing a podcast where we were. We got oh. like <laughs> that <laughs> would be. He's harshing on it. My favorite bit so I've been good. trying to be able to memorize is. Now you may find it inconceivable or at the very least a bit unlikely that the relative position of the planets and the stars could have a special deep significance or meaning that exclusively applies to only you. But please allow me to assure you that these forecasts and the predictions are all based on solid scientific documented evidence. So you would have to be some kind of moron not to realize that every single one of them is absolutely true. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the song is parodying? Is it original? It's original. Oh, okay. nice. His originals are my favorites of his. Plant Stone Effect, you, graphic's a thing. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out. You know, it's kind of an intuition is the stuff by the moon. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, 
<laughs> you got the moon, the planets rotate in a circle, either motion because of the, the general, just, you know, all the graphics. I'm just saying. I remember a professor of mine as an example of, you know, the limits of quote unquote common sense are. Common sense would tell us we're sitting still right now, pretty still in this room, sitting in our chairs. The truth is that we're hurtling through space at multiple vectors at, at speeds that right, no vehicle that we've ever made has ever been able to achieve. <laughs> you know, <laughs> every both, time, both if, you, band, if maybe. you think about like time travel movies, like at all, mm -hmm. like realistically, if you time traveled, the Earth would be gone. Like, yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Position. You got a space travel too. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I watched a great time travel episode of Rick and Morty last night. Rattlestar Rick Lactica. Did I see that? It's the one, one with the snakes. I it's, it's really a standout. That's... Oh, the the time travel one because they barely <laughs> yeah with the snakes. And, uh, <laughs> snake terminators come back to. Why would there be a snake in space? <laughs> Literally everything is in space, Morty. <laughs> 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 oh wait, this was a ten slider I was supposed to roll, right? Six for this, six for this, six for this, six for this. So it's nine different tables, each of which is a no, six. I, mean for the, I rolled a five here, but Oh to pick roll? one of the tables. Oh, whatever. You're welcome to roll on each of them. Oh. Whichever one you want. Is the you could roll for a biomantic omen, an affinity bonded pet. An odd family connection. A scion of the fast stars. Sign, a sign of the fast stars. Yes. Fast stars. Fast stars. Soar through the skies above in predictable patterns. I'll just do this when I roll it. Oh, yeah. old friend. Well, <laughs> odd stoner seems immune to side effects. Stoner seems moon to side effects, so you've brought another person along with you to the party, or you could be. Back oh wait, home. I thought this was me. What is this? That's an old friend of yours who is loyal to you. Yep. Oh, I see. I thought they were saying that's sort of my character, a loyal old friend. So I have a, a sidekick that's a stoner. Okay. That's my interpretation. Okay. <laughs> so I have another. Character. Is that would that technically be an NPC or? Yep. No. Yeah, they just kind of add. You can run him so if you far. you can run him if you want though. Well, I can order him around. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you have veto power with your old friend. Uh, odd, odd storm. <laughs> so odd. My name's Odd. Immune to effects? Side effects, I guess. That's awesome. That, that'll be useful. So do you, like, do, is there in... <laughs> we're going to have one of those times where y'all are acting weird. And the one person <laughs> who's... <laughs> oh, man. Um, y'all need to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing going on. Are there uh, drug side effects in the, in the system? Oh, okay. Yeah, there are. This, is, this might be a little dangerous for me. Yeah. This is. I think the world itself is psychedelic and will have effects. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. We already yeah, have one is, llama turn. This is what a normal a normal day grass <laughs> looks like. Mm. Let's go touch that pink hemisphere. Spawning a new world. Well, that's not a rock, that's another area. Oh, that's a giant that's strawberry? Pink hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> that's as good as mine. <laughs> is anyone allergic to nuts? I am not. Well, if anyone wants cacao, you can break off a piece of Oh, thank you. Yeah. Like oh raw God, cacao. Of the I don't think it's raw. It's probably mixed with like honey and almond. Um, you can use the label. I just like, uh, it. I'm familiar with cacao, I think. <laughs> it's kind of like non processed chocolate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. The OG chocolate. Oh, Alright, good. Yeah, it's my favorite. When Honey Mama's on sale, his mama gets that Honey Mama. Mmm, <laughs> like coconut. <laughs> Here's yours. Okay. Hold, this is just making this character. Mila, I was thinking about you being a black gold industrialist. If that if that doesn't suit you, then um, there's I'll take a, a cue from a system called 
Electric Bastion Land, which has Ooh, Muppets. Look at that. Uh, yes, in that one, you roll a failed career. So you can embrace it if you want, or you can oh. say, that's what I tried to do, but it didn't work out. That's interesting. I'll have to think about that because I also really like when you're like, it can be, it doesn't have to be oil, it could be something else. So I was thinking like, it's black gold, and what could that do? Like a stone does something energetically? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also have that like crystal of stone in my head or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the override ju jewel. Mm -hmm. Which you can tell by your eyes. Is that what we said? That's right, yeah. They, did I say they look kind of like diamonds or something? Yeah. But I found out what my hair looks like. Dish. So, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I saw someone where they have their hair pulled back and it's dark, but then this all is like red with a white tail. So it looks oh, like cool. they have a fox tail. Oh. Yes. So that's what Miela's hair looks like. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I have a life goal now. <laughs> I know. I was like, if I had like thicker hair, I don't know. I thought about it. We'll see. Well worth the effort. <laughs> Excellent. I'll tell you guys this. Not you. <laughs> My biggest regret in life was uh, not having a mohawk when I was able. Because <laughs> you yeah, can't do wigs like mohawks. <laughs> I never did one until this year. Really? And then I'd been, been cutting the sides for a few years, and I was just like, well, what if I just kept just, going just on? Going on. It, had... feels, it feels good. Let's just kind of keep, keep chasing up, see how it goes. I did a mohawk once for a party. And then, I mean, I had the, you know, the faux hawk. I never really stuck it up except that one time, big purple mohawk. And I was mm -hmm. a statue, so I was all chalk white, wearing overalls splattered with neon paint. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's really fun. Yeah. You're the person to invite to parties. Free. I remember, do you remember <laughs> that, like, nature birthday party Ash and I had at Hamlin? You, like, dressed really cool. I had like the, yes, or the leather green man mask. I do remember <laughs> that. Oh, mm -hmm. what a joy. Y'all had some good, you were covered in ivy, as I recall. That was Ash. I was okay. like a peacock. Yes. But I decided to be like a dying peacock because I was emo then. So like, I think I had like intense black eye makeup or something. Yeah. I remember the peacock eyes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Memories. I think we stuck roses from the ceilings. It was kind of fun to clean up my friend's place the next day. Nice. <laughs> Do you remember, so quick side note, like we had a bunch of bubbles. No, that was our last one. But the police came to one party in college, and I had a bunch of bubbles. They're like, what's this? They thought it was like some kind of drug. Jesus. <laughs> Tell us, D, officer, we just have a vial of, right, psychoactive stuff. With a little glow of water. Yeah. But I have this That's epic... That's doing it now. <laughs> that actually be kind of cool. <laughs> but, um... I have this epic picture of me blowing bubbles in my friend's face, who is just very unamused. <laughs> nice. Even better. Oh, he was not having it. <laughs> Good. So it's my party. <laughs> it's my party. I'll blow bubbles if I want to. <laughs> Alright, what else do I gotta do here? Do I, I just roll one of these, or...? As many as you want. Yeah. As detailed as you want. I got, like... So many times I rolled, I think only three of these or something, like a, maybe like three or four of these. Oh. That's how you ended up being a living war between the yeah. plastic <laughs> animal cules in your body and the uh, telekinetic gut biome that yeah. is constantly pushing them away from your vital organs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's great. That's I love this uh... character. <laughs> His star sign is the That's Joker. That's pretty creative. You know, lost copies from the void. And I really feel like he embodies that. It was I like, never ever would have thought of <laughs> telekinetic. <laughs> Semi aware. <laughs> it's, it's in one of those. Is it? Yep. You could roll it. You might be. <laughs> A telekinetic uh, acidophilus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm at a loss here. All right. Um, there's another, let me look at the, once you're satisfied doing that stuff. Do they have a nine-sided dice? Die? Maybe a ten and skip tens. Oh, I got five again. I'm going to reroll that. One. Biomantic Omen. So this is my... Your weirdness. 
Okay. Synthetic antiviral factories in extra organ. Okay, you've got an extra organ. Factories? <laughs> yeah. Is that like Anatomy Park kind of thing? <laughs> Welcome to Anatomy Park! Where do, where do you think the factory organ lives on your person? Um, was it an old factory organ or one of those new style ones? <laughs> little smoke comes out of it when you're sick because they're working extra hard. Oh, it's, oh wait. Is the organ synthetic or the factory? Just I have an extra organ, but inside that organ is a synthetic antiviral factory. That's how I'm reading it. Okay. <laughs> And I want to say the extra organ is in my butt. Nice. <laughs> Cube shaped or just normal organ? God, you're going to be immune to so many things. Uh -huh. If your buddy can't oh, be yeah, affected by side buddy. effects, then you can't be. Yeah, you have advantage against viruses. <laughs> That's great. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And you're the surgeon. Yeah. So you got that built in. This crew might, might have need of surgery. Like yep. Dip his fingers up. Oh, yeah, that's a virus. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Butt thought. starts rumbling. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> if you have irritable bowel syndrome, we, we are in trouble. <laughs> oh, like, acting up. A gremlin sized white blood cell is flying <laughs> into you. It wasn't supposed to be like this. <laughs> Uh, everyone put on your gas masks. <laughs> uh. Oh. Uh. Jasmine, you got a hundred experience points from the crystal clock. Oh yeah. You can milk that on your I think I did. Like do you you just need a hundred, not like a hundred more. I like all that you wrote a hundred. Good, good, good. I'm gonna make sure. Oh, oh uh, okay, the caravan thing. That actually has the logistics. Oh. His notes are more about the oh. initial purchases. <clears throat> okay. I noticed some of the characters that I'm gonna kick myself for pointing out, but I believe we should have, we should all have one life rather than two. Because we started level zero, not level one. I think we did the calculation. Yep. Wrong. We actually oh, no. only have one. Oh. Yeah. If you take one hit, you're down, and then we have to talk about uh, what terrible, terrible thing, either death or fate, uh, is equal. <laughs> yeah, don't get too attached. What's but once thing? you trade, you know, once you trade some of those uh, drugs, you get experience points for level. Oh. My antiviral factory. Uh... <laughs> Helps me die, not die. <laughs> Very good. It'll give its life to save you. <laughs> wrote down the. I'm trying to remember if he wrote down the date or something. He wrote down something. Eighteen weeks. I. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't know what else to do. Here. Start off. Oh, next. Assign four points across. Oh. Ha. Ka. And ba. Now these are the only, you know, usually they have strength, X, con, and wisdom. Uh, in this, no such dice. Remember how in uh, past games it's just been a 50, like one, two, three, you fail, four, five, six, six, succeed. Sure. Same kind of thing here. But as you go through, you know how in Oregon Trail, like sometimes someone gets a snake I, I bite. I actually never played Oregon Trail. Uh, well, okay. there's snake bites. There. There's snake bites, there's dysentery. These are the tropes about Oregon Trail, these okay. bad things happening. So as you're going on your own trail, bad things will happen to you, like snake bites and diseases, but also like a you know soul corruption or uh, uh, essence radiation. So when that happens, uh, if you like fail a save against such a misfortune, mm -hmm. your ka. If it's a bodily thing, you spend a point of ha, you lose it. If it's a solely thing, you spend a point of ka, you lose it. And once this is at like zero, you've lost all of them. Then you start losing inventory slots. Oh. And if you take a long rest, which in this game is a week, if you take a week long rest, you can repair either all your ha or all your ka or 
2d6 of these or 2d6 of these or all your boss. So, you know, that's that's going to be the fun calculus part of the game. Bah! When you're rolling Misfortune, it'll be on a d20. And there are a couple different things you rolled Misfortune for when you're doing a, a d24. For Misfortune, for carousing, if, if you get cash, you can spend it to party in a town, and then you get experience points for that. Oh. Um, and then you roll a d20 to see if the party was good news or bad news for you. Higher is better. So with a point of ba, you can re-roll the 20. You rolled a one, oh. oh no, spend my ba, re-roll it. Or you can add points of ba to the roll. Say you got a 20, and you add it and make it a 21, that will always be a good thing. And if you can get it up to 25, that will be a great thing. No need to go past 25, though. That's usually the cap for good things on the d20. So divine favor. OK, I see what you're saying. So that's just like odds. Yeah, it's so like I have six to divide up. Or I get automatically get two. Is that what you said? You have four that you have to spread between these three. Oh. Some decision making, yeah. Ba, ba, the creative threads of possibility woven into the tapestry of a human, the changeling essence that weaves together a unique individual over time, fired by the spark of soul and unified in the world through the medium of body. Wow. Some cultures believe personalities have afterlives, while others believe their threads wind, unwind, and wind again over time. A few rare sages argue that personalities are unique occurrences that fade away after motivating a single body, but necromancers and vivimancers put the lie to this notion. It's more. This is trippy. Yeah. <laughs> this is unlike any uh, role-playing thing I've yeah. ever done, ever. Ditto. Okay, so... I have four to throw here. Yeah. I'll just do that. Two on one. All right. That being done, also take two skills. Could be something like a job, bricklayer, priest, historian, or something narrower, sleight of hand, melee combat, or something weird like project management, or golem whispering. Any two things. Um, is there a chart? There's tables you can roll on. If you oh, want. Yes. <laughs> yep. In in the second edition, which we mostly refer to, he didn't include a chart because he wanted you to just go crazy. But in this one, there's a chart that's pretty inspiring. Or I could just make one up. Is that yep. what you're saying? You, exactly. You're welcome to make one up. This chart has examples. Uh, if you want. Just the loyal old thing. You already are a surgeon, so where are you going to say you have surgery kind of built in? Okay. Mm -hmm. I wrote that down. Okay, surgery. I can't spell today. Surgery. Sugary. This morning I spelled Anton Sugar. That guy from No Country for Old Men. Oh, so these are just mechanical skills. Or no, where, where, where's the this chart? This is like, here's the oh, chart. Okay. I'll just ignore it because I made a new system. Okay. Positive UVG cells. Apothecary, big game. Oh, okay, I see. This is akin to uh, proficiencies. Yep. D and D, <laughs> lagoon farming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is there is there a big thing on lagoons in this game? If you take lagoon farming, there will be. It <laughs> <laughs> says foster D and D proficiency is more inspirational. Mm -hmm. It says lagoon farming, and right under it says marketing. Sell magic lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds well worthwhile. Looks like that's pushing for a combo there. <laughs> We're retreating for camels, not last cows. <laughs> 1,000 lagoons. Know and find and smoke and dry and preserve your inappropriate berries and herbs. <laughs> Oh, this is... All right, I'm just going to roll. This is... 
it's a d40, so you don't have to get creative on how to use dice to make that happen. Uh, maybe a d100 and ignore anything higher than 40. Um, what happened to my tensor? There's. Um. There it is. I have to grab my 30 oh, side. Okay. 30 side. Okay. I'm trying to remember who. Okay, so we got the thousand camels. That's on the list. The deliver the letter. Mm -hmm. And then the organ in something plains. We have organs? A oh. pirateized organ from a strange creature that. Have been driver, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that was, I think that was Al Elroy? Elroy? Mm. Oh, his? Yeah. Oh, yeah, where? I thought if you, um, I don't know if you've thought about the person receiving your letter of inheritance. Oh, no. If yeah. you haven't, I have. Yes. Their name is Rouge Lombardo. <laughs> He is, he is at the uh, pot shard crater where he's trying to turn some profit. He, uh, he's old money in the, uh, the Decapolis, okay. some of the cities uh, around the water. Uh, but uh, he's fallen out with his family. He's kind of been disowned because mm -hmm. he's a little eccentric and likes all this stuff west of civilization. He's been disowned that he's getting inheritance? Or is the inheritance letter maybe going to say you don't get anything? <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> You're um, onto something. So black gold, I'm thinking of it as like a stone, like it's black gold. And so I was thinking it could do two, one of two things. Like how some metals the body can tolerate. Maybe this is something where if you like put it on your fingers, you kind of got these like black claws. If you put it on your head, you kind of can get like horns. Or like on your shoulder, now you have like a hard piece of shoulder. Um, so if we wanted to say something like that exists in this world, or I was just thinking if you hold it up and look through it, you can like see what's invisible or something. What, what, do, you, what do you people think would be funner? What was what's the thing itself? Black gold, right? Yeah. So it's it's a rock. Yeah. Like, like a, a malleable thing, like an actual metal. Ooh, yeah. Would it be a cr crystalline or go metallic, it's, like it's gold? It's like gold, but it's black. Yeah. It's so, so anything it's gold can metal. do. Yeah. I guess gold is also a conductor, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I think I'm biased to anything that shapes bodies at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I have to yeah. That is I like as maybe both. Maybe it has this natural quality of like symbiosis and advance enhancement, but it it alone can be used to make special invisibility seers. I like the idea mm -hmm. of it sees not just like stuff that's invisible, but something very strange, uh, psychedelic and specific. Like it sees your dreams or traumas or memories or you know It sees your greatest fear. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> True <laughs> seeing, but you also see your, your greatest fear. So me being a black gold industrious, like I know how to see it, like in dark caves, since it's black. Um, also like hearing for the pitch, like touching, like did you if it can like mold to like flesh and stuff, just touching it could be dangerous. But if you check for the right pitch, that's when it's like. Like a tuning fork? Yeah, then you can like be like, oh, this is now like ready or willing to like, like now I'm like kind of communicating that this is like what I want to happen. But otherwise, if you pick it up, it's just going to kind of like go on you. So like I know how to smell it out since you can't really see it if you're in the dark cave. We're talking about black gold. I'm loving this. So like I have the ability to like smell it out if we're like in the caves. Since you can't really see it, so it, since everything is like kind of black and dark and caves, and then I know like the correct pitch for when you can like mold it into body. Did you hear that like black gold can, if you put it like on your fingers and then you can kind of have claws, or on your head okay. you can kind of have horns, so it kind of can connect with transforming body, but then also if you just hold it up, or like I guess your now claws or something, like if you look through any of it, you see what your fear is, someone, that person's fears or your fears. Okay. You can make it like malleable by hand. 
instead of firing fish. it more. Sure, yeah. And that, that's how you get claws or whatever? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh. It also has its own sentience. Oh, it do, okay, never mind. It does itself. <laughs> yeah, talk, talk <laughs> into being a claw. How about, and when you see the fear, you ex, you you literally like see the thing that they're afraid of and kind of experience it, and you experience exactly the fear that they would experience if they saw it. Mm. Can you say more? Like, so if I look through it, again, am I seeing my fear or their fear? So if I look at someone... I it's just a... They, the image of them it turns into the thing that they are afraid of in oh, your then visual I make, field. Then I feel that fear? Empathetically. Interesting. So yeah, it's empathetically. Like, if you do that, you gain some information, but it also like, is sort of be psychologically damaging. Yes, <laughs> you probably have to save or take some car damage. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I like the way you play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how many of these do I roll for? Uh, you get two. Two. I got safe driving. So, okay. Once you guys get a car, I guess you have a wagon too. Yeah, it's a uh, rally driving, I guess. Drifting, <laughs> stunt driving, and crash safely. <laughs> I love that. That's the definition of safe driving. Safe. Yeah. Imagine drifting a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Tokyo drift. It's a talent. No, oh, that was oh ten. 16. <laughs> I'm so excited. In it. Mm. <laughs> oh, legume farming. Lame. Yes! <laughs> Throw beans. Work long hours, play erroneous taxes. <laughs> Sell legumes. <laughs> so maybe back in the Redlands. Just legume smuggler? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> driving. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a moon, a moonshine. No, I swear there are no legumes under the sea. Yeah, yeah. The vintner lords, they love uh, uh, blood wines, okay? And they love them so much, maybe, that that's all you're allowed to grow. But there are people that work for them or, you know, are going to be consumed by them but live around there because uh, they have to have people uh, who need food and legumes. That's one one sort of sneaky thing that you can grow, but maybe it is. Maybe it's a secret ingredient to bloodline legumes. Blood drops in the soil. If you, uh, yeah, if you till the soil with blood, you get red legumes. Nice. Uh, I was going to ask to re-roll. But... You certainly can re-roll if you'd like to, but... I don't know how legume farming is going to come in handy in this game. <laughs> I rolled what I rolled. <laughs> Wasn't I believe on one of our missions, different game, we didn't think of Magic 8 Ball. How would that come <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Predicted Doom as Doom was happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good insight. It really directed the end of that game. <laughs> well, the 8 Ball was, I was just thinking about things. I was just thinking about that earlier. <laughs> Whatever in the morning I was trying to get back to sleep. I was like, you know, I should have ended that game with like uh, my robot guy staring out the window and saying, finally, I'm experiencing fear. Oh, <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> that was a shtick. Feel everything but fear. Those are various Well, he was mutating yeah. too, that right? That was like a new programming or something? I can't remember how he did it. Yeah, that's how I think it's the thing. Just whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Immune to fear. Or Ken doesn't feel fear. Exactly. Something like that. Well, I'm trying to remember. We got we had <laughs> some <laughs> stuff. Um, I'm trying to remember the names. Is there a list of uh, things that we could purchase? Because I'm trying to yep. decipher. Good decipher this. Yeah. To get a whole scratch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a little joke about some of that in the text, yeah, and I can't right. remember like, yeah. any of the things. Yeah. But they were cool stuff. Some sort of sand, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> Some sort of sand. Oh, I'm on the cat coffee. Got sure. one P keeps coming up. So, one person, maybe that one yeah, person? Yeah, that's okay. one person can ride here. Okay. So, we have established we got space for everybody to ride on animals. Okay. Street. I keep seeing clothes there, but that can't be right. That can't be right. We didn't do something as boring as. Was it? Coffees? 
Coffee's. Coffees. Plural. Is that? Coffees. Cat coffee is yeah, okay. one of the coffee, normal products coffee. that you so have. Three sacks of coffees. Okay, all right. That's... And then there was something else, like yes. spices. There's the trade goods. You get number of languages equal to your ka. You have ka one. Saffron was the other one. Oh, ha. Okay, so ka one. And besides extra languages? Okay. Yeah. You know high common. So, I just think the sack is saffron. Which and then like that fake saffron. accent they used to I teach in <laughs> finishing school. So, exactly. Right. Yes. So I'm from right. New York. So, like, why do you put down <laughs> supply as one person? Hi. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. Sack of supply. Probably one makes sense if you know red, of... red tongue. Or Winarian, the hill dialects of the Vintner Dwarves. All of these ones are make sense for the land you're from, but you could take anything. Okay. We should have a fair amount of sacks, several sacks of coffee. Yeah. And then we should have a bunch of supplies. That's what everyone speaks yeah. is high common or just well, right? Yeah. Sure. Higher, maybe one either high or vulgar, there. but. If you know one, you can understand the other. Sure, sure. High common, upper class, literary common. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. Yeah. Literary mm -hmm. common, rainbow tongue, taught by teachers to noble and rich students. Old yeah. fashioned, unnecessary complex. That would make nice sense. Yeah. <laughs> High common. Okay. okay. Red tongue. Fun with languages. Oh, no, the vulgar dialect of the red language. Okay, I assume that's another. Four sections. Which one do you say? 14? 14? Well, we just make the it skill up and say, the, oh, the hills like out coffee, out. saffron, or supplies. Yeah. I don't think there's much else in here. Like, I think this is also. There, okay. looking at it. But I'll give you the book, too. You know, I was saying, is that what black gold is, Kristoff? That black area? Oh, this is the wine dark ocean. Oh, so it's okay. kind of the edge of the world. It's the ocean. And it does appear to be black. I mean, mythically, most. Probably none of you have ever met anybody who's actually been out this far. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. The gall grass. I know you were interested in going there for. I'm just used. To oh speaking. yeah. The gall grass. Y'all were interested in getting camels from there. That's pretty significantly far. Uh -huh. Grass classes. Because were we here? The hand. Yeah, we just oh. left the high road and the low, and we were going to journey through the porcelain citadel and the trail of Boma streams. Were well, we thinking Colossus. we needed to look for supplies or something? Were we running out of food? I thought I was yeah. like, oh, we need to fish. We, but we traded not. for food right at the end. <laughs> Jerkies from the hamster farmers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, got, not hamster <laughs> I got those little snack cubes, but I don't know how long that will last. I thought you all were going to go to the pot shard crater. I'm ready for any of those locations, but oh yeah, but we didn't need my letter. All right, we were going to go through there, so we're going to the pot shard crater next, on our way to the. Mm -hmm. Which means you take the death facing passage. Mm -hmm. It's deadly. Excellent. I'm going to get this character killed. So much fun to face. Just came up with my hair. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll focus on getting mine killed. And if some of you also also go, go out in the same terrible series right. of decisions, no then more than uh, we can enjoy it together. Okay. I have As for the date you mentioned earlier, for like loyalty is a we all will start in loyalty red month, is born just to so die they have a good sense. stretch of easy travel months. Is that your okay, name? Okay. Yes. Loyalty. Loyalty. Where are the uh, the mountains of light? Going in black to gold? They're Loyalty off the map in this direction. Loyalty. By the Redlands. Loyalty. Actuary. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pick that one. Uh, Vulcan. That sounds. Yes. That seems interesting. The dwarf oh language. Well, it's best spoken in echoey things, so you can't, it's hard to speak outside because <laughs> the echoes are part of the language. That's so cool. And the, and the, and the uh, what's it say, the, all right. The bound dialect of mountains of light and black gold, vast written corpus. When written, the space between the characters has as much meaning as the characters themselves. Much is lost by speaking it. Lots of silences and isolated consonants. Right. It's best spoken indoors or in echoing caves. Uh, 
The echo is part of the language. It sounds very strange outdoors as parts of the words are missing. So the, so the black gold mountains are kind of controlled by the dwarves, uh, and that's in the Red Lands. And you're a, you're a black gold miner? Industrialist. Oh, industrialist. Yeah, the carts aren't gold. But I'm saying, like, I also do some more stuff. Mining. I feel like industrialist is just sort of like a business person. This I think so too. But I feel like I can okay. do a little bit. And this is readable? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's for manufacturing. All right, this is as long as. Since I, don't, I don't think we need to hear if we got it exactly right. Yeah, oh, yeah I just want to make sure. That's, that's, that's what I think I want to put I'm sure. Like a factory. That. Like, no man will make off with what we care about anyway. I was like, I just wanted to make sure that Or maybe business I might not be here next week. I'm like, so. <laughs> so I'm just to you can't just make shit up in this army. game, what? Okay. Or maybe it means I've had to set up a business of a faction. How many weeks have meeting so far? I take it that you two would be somewhat familiar with the dwarf, so I'd like to read their little thing. Dwarf, D W A R F, is a backronym for Die Werke Aristocracy Revolutionae Fraternity. Dwarfs are a distinct culture class of selectively biomanced people. So they were actually made. Uh, they have effectively fought the traditional aristoi of the red and orange lands to a standstill and now form a major industrialist society of the Rainbow Lands. A famously bureaucratic and collectivist faction, they are the only ones staunchly opposing the bureaucratic and individualist Emerald City Cogflower Corporation, the coin church of the Greenlands. So they're far off in the Red Lands. The Vintner Lords ostensibly own the Red Lands, but the dwarfs have their own you know, uh, land within it. Area within it, okay. And so you said like they're against bureaucracy, like what are they for? They are bureaucratic themselves. Oh. They're collectivists, they're bureaucratic, kind of like dwarves in popular imagination. Um, but what are they for? They're, they are industrialists, bureaucratic, collectivists, and they're opposed to the individual. <laughs> it's funny. They're famously bureaucratic and collectivist, staunchly opposed to the bureaucratic and individualist. Emerald City oh, okay. Cogflower Corporation, which is a little more like, uh, uh, you know, kind of an American yeah. horror show. No, oh, so they're more into um, collectivism. Yeah, but it looks like the, but it looks, uh, yes. Yep, I thought you were talking about, I imagine the Emerald City to look just like the Emerald City from the... Yes, the that's <laughs> And they're from the Redlands? Where are the Redlands? Where's the Emerald City? Yeah, where's the Emerald City? The city is right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's that big blue thing? An ocean? Exactly. A sea. Civil sea. A sea. This is like civilization. Oh, so this is like a giant. It's huge. See this? There are little numbers between these lines. That's how many weeks it takes for a caravan to travel that far. Oh, so it's okay. It's huge. I can't even see it. Oh, it takes two weeks my to eyes get paid. My... One week to get paid. Okay. So this is a, a city. Let's see. These are, these are just a marker of how far it takes, but these are the points of interest in circles. Okay. And most of them are, are a lot of them are, some are cities or settlements, but a lot are just uh, like landmarks or regions. Okay, sure. It doesn't have the, uh, he the buys colors. super cheap supply. The ruler, the legend. Okay. What do you call those? Person? No, not mine. But yeah, the uh, scale. Right. Scale. I bought, bought a med kit, so I have. There might be one. There's one. Um, Flap <laughs> that I have I turned over there. on the other side, it might I just, have uh, I think he the had, size I on think it. We have a little more supplies because of that. I guess it's irrelevant. Time is the most relevant, that's why there's weeks printed on it. Okay, so okay, I got my languages. What else? Next, you get a pet, a spell, or a mutation, as you will. Here are some pets that you could randomly generate. It'd be like a I already roll. have that side <laughs> Mutations that. and then spells. I wanted to find a sneaky, fluffy thing. Okay. But what what does this word mean? M I E N. Mean. Mean. Attitude. Oh, okay. Ability. Major, major term in Troika. Is that what this called, Troika? Troika's no. a system. Not the one we similar. Okay, exciting. Hence my t-shirt. Oh. 
Okay, like climb. Literary psychedelic? Just, just throwing out a guess here. Who the people that invented this were on acid. <laughs> Just Luca, Luca Reyes, were you on acid when you uh, made this game? It's a one guy. One guy. It's a one. Oh really? Game. Wow. Yeah. He illustrated it, laid it out, and wrote it. Whoa. Whoa. Crazy impressive. And by crazy, I mean good job. <laughs> <laughs> you lunatic. <laughs> Radiation ghosts. Yeah, watch out for those. <laughs> Just, just gonna throw that out there in case you didn't catch that. How dangerous that was. Source corruption, or when they say when they say source corruption, are they talking about like the New Age type source, like the God Force thing? Oh, I'm sorry, say one more. When they when they say source corruption, is there the source in this land? Is it like a, a magic source? Is oh. it like the force? Is it like the Source is soul. Kind soul. Of. Okay. Yeah. It's it is a force that can be a generic term for the creative essence of the world. The sure. world soul. Some creatures use it to exceed the parameters of their physical existence, also called the blood of magic. Yeah. Okay, so are the are the vampires up there, are they magical? I mean who isn't? Uh, they they employ some magicians, I'm sure. Magic, science, what's that quote? Uh, science that's, you know, advanced enough looks like magic. That's what's going on in this world. But yeah, they, have, they definitely have some magicians. They have to be good at necroambulism. They're undead. Okay. Well, I'm just thinking of what would be... Oh, what would make sense. Yeah, what would make sense. Uh, where, what's the other one? Um, mutation, this is pets, Mutations, or... pets. Here's... You could do... These are quick, easy to grok spells, oh. uh, a bunch of them. These are spells that are more flavorful to this land. Okay. So your spell, roll three. Which spell did you take uh, as liberty? Um, Underwrite the Rocking God. It's, it's really not named that in the book, but it allows um, loyalty to do actually science with life forces and um, trade out one soul for another on the balance sheet of uh, life. Good. Can I read more about these? With who's alive and who's dead. Can I read more about these redlands and the vampire? What are they called? Yeah. Vampires. Vinter lords. You're trying to make sense of. Yeah. Vinters. Vinter lords. I'm a redland vinter. So a vinter is is a is the name of the race in the redlands. Vinter is one that makes wine. Yep. Oh. Okay. So the wine making lords. Wine making lords. The redland district. Where the vampires come? Wine comes from legumes, which you're from? That's awesome. Ah, <laughs> uh, the bloody legume wine. Uh, as you're doing your thing in the caravan, you can take a turn, or when you're at a location, you can use an action to uh, do market research. And when you do that, we'll use a system to randomize how much, like, the neighboring town, or if you take a whole week, the neighboring, like, three towns in a chain would pay for a given good. Mm. And this is a sheet to keep check of that. Mm. You can look at that. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh. I don't mind this very good reference. And after you do the spells, spet a pet or mutation, it'll just be time to buy stuff. We'll also invite everybody to think about how um, this vintner joins the party, this vintner surgeon. Awesome. How do you order? Wait, I thought it was the vintner lord. Clovis, yeah. do you feel... It says this is a bloody popular uprising against the vintner lord. Right. On the map, all you can see is this place. That's the closest. But if you go further that way, that's where the vintner lords are. They control all that land. But this is a little uprising. Yeah. Okay, so. Maybe Vintner Lord is, is in here. Is there a different thing for Vintner Lord? This is the whole glossary. Redlander. Because I'm getting the impression the Vintner Lords are like the rulers of the Redlands. Yep. And they're vampires. Yep. 
Couldn't put it better myself. So I would be more aligned with them. Yes. And there are some gaps uh, purposefully built into the way sure. this is written, and I welcome you to fill them in. Oh, so okay. you are now the authority on the Vintner Lords. Oh, okay. yeah. You tell me. Okay. You didn't find it in here? Mm -hmm. They're not in the glossary. Just that little mention you saw in Redlands District is basically all they give us, and then a oh. few references like on that random table that you have. I wonder if we're... So this is the Redland District it's talking about. At a point where Clovis okay. could run with those charts and an equipment chapter to finish his character while we start the action with the rest sure. of the party. And then the spot to bring his character in will hopefully reveal itself about the time you're done. Yes. Okay. Can we do a short reintroduction of our characters? Good idea. Let's uh, let me first give Clovis this last chunk of goodies. So you get okay. you have a thousand bucks to spend. Okay. Here's goods that you buy. Probably want to get a weapon, maybe an armor. You know, no proficiency type stuff in here. If you okay. own it, you can squeeze the trigger. And then um, thousand dollars. You could go with the first caravan loadout and just add your pony to the crew. Oh, okay. If you want to. Is expedite it. Or you could buy using your funds exactly the amount that you want. Most people just got camels and a cart to carry their stuff. And that's like $1,000? Yep. Not right. Supply has to go to our animals as well as us, right? Or how does that work? As Not or in the grassy parts. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. The animals so, can graze until they get a new grass. I think that's why you picked camels or something. Yeah. Yeah, they can survive longer without supply. Oh, yeah, without water. Um, Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. Let's reintroduce our cells. Nose goes. I'm Kristoff. I'm the world uh, of the ultraviolet grasslands, including the person who's paying for your trip, Satrap 54 Seer. He wants to build a museum to the military industrial complex of the past. Uh, he's being funded by the Vintner Lords, who think it'd just be good fun because it might be destructive and they love blood. Uh, yeah, you also met another uh, Satrap last time you were journeying who let you go into his walking, spindly-legged, crystal clock creature and have, have some fun there. Those of you who could afford it. <laughs> this time I'll probably be playing uh, murderous, uh, biomechanical, uh, zombie-like creatures that are trying to kill you, or something else, who knows? We'll see what the dice say. Love that. So the, this guy's a venture lord? He... Is funded by... He's oh, he's funded you, by the And he's funded, okay. funded by the Vintner Lords. Okay. That makes sense. I was just going to do the camel and then, like everyone else did. What is it? I get one of these two? The little cart? Yep. You get five sacks of supplies, and you can roll here to see, roll a d6 oh. to see what the supply is. One, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay. That you're trucking along. And this guy, his name's Spare Sack. It's a joke because you have a spare sack for that saddle. This could be your stoner friend. So it's you on a pony, a pony pulling your cart, your stoner friend, and five sacks of something. Oh, okay. So I get two animals. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. And then on top of that, you have a little money to spend. $290 left. So you get all this plus $290 to spend. And that describes it right here? Yeah. No. I'm sorry, which one was it? Oh, five? Supplies. Here it is. You've got two sacks of supplies. That's trade just good to live. But this is the trick. No, I just want to copy or whatever. I'll read that and then decide what I need to write down. Okay. Um, I I'm just gonna do a magic thing, I guess, a spell. Oh, wait, 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 no. What, what, what was that list of mine? <laughs> if you roll it's too complicated, <laughs> it's a lot complicated. This took up most that? of the time. That was uh. I was thinking a spell or a bio corruption thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Bio corruption. 
Roll three d6s. Uh, three. One. Oh, wait, that's a d4. No. Oh. Three. Four. Five. Three, one, one, four, one would be spell number three, one. Okay. One. All right, you guys go ahead. Also wait for Kai. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're all into the Yeah, Chris said he's the wolf. Oh, there's other people. The satraps, the cats, the people who the own cats the cats. Who have and snakes, the tail. And little human hands. And oh, I didn't nose. know that. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know if they're called cats at that point. <laughs> Oh, but also I feel like that cat owner's worst nightmare is if cats have thumbs. Oh no! That's the only thing keeping the... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Go down the wrong alley in the Violet City. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's start introductions. <laughs> oh yeah, <totally. laughs> Absolutely. Uh... Despite the shamanistic uh, mutant-like appearance of this blue creature, uh, his age uh, is both his age is deceptive in that he appears to know references that are much a much older individual would know, and uh, he's on the road due to his sheer industrial greed as as a professional citizen with high expectations. Uh, Professional citizen is pretty kind of contributing member of society. Yeah, but his society's really weird. <laughs> it's kind Where of off from the what's it? The blue lands. The blue what's lands. It called? The, as your ruins. ruins. <laughs> so, uh, and he's followed around by what he refers to as a butler, but mm. the you know this uh, it's very insidious seeming individual. <laughs> it's like you know the hood is over and you never see their face. And, uh, yeah, they, they're there to help him, but, you know, uh, it, was, it, would, it was made clear that he's probably a, a sacrifice for some sort of cult worship. <laughs> but, Professional citizen. Yeah, so it, uh, to him, is, yeah. So. I mean, sorry, it. <laughs> thing, it. Yeah. It, they. Yeah, it, they. <laughs> the... Or it, 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 that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, that. They would refer to themselves, but, like, you know, if you're talking to the whole deal, then yeah, of course they, if you're talking about him and his colony and his <laughs> and what is it, uh, affected with a microplastic synthetic animal, <laughs> animal like. so it's just a whole cool thing he's recently taken on a veteran hamster who loves splashing in water, a little scratch under his eye <laughs> yeah. passing and stare an anthropomorphic <laughs> hamster? <laughs> just a little hamster. Yeah. Went through something. It's been a thousand yards there. <laughs> How do you say his name? Its name? <laughs> oh. Hathak. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. The what? Hathak. Hathak is the name of my character. The hamster. Oh. The hamster, <laughs> yeah. The hamster's still trying to figure it out. I just got that. Fuck. I'm Mercury. Him playing Loyalty Dorian 17, a different flavor of him. Um, Loyalty is a Hexad Enforcer Militant. Specifically, he is an insurance adjuster for the Neighborhood Watch. Uh, the Neighborhood Watch is a notorious crime syndicate uh, active all over the cities and not so much out here. Um, and insurance adjusting. Uh, involves a lot of wet work in the neighborhood watch. So, <laughs> uh, loyalty is like young, square jawed, crew cut, blonde haired, blue eyed, um, very much a Chad sort of look, but with the lidless eye of the neighborhood watch tattooed across the back of his neck, 
marking him out as very much belonging to that hexad. Uh, he uh, rides around with a big gun on Yelga the Battle Camel <laughs> and um, does actuarial science with uh, life and death. He can square the balance sheets of who is actually supposed to end up alive and dead and as things iron themselves out. Um, oh, okay. It comes with the background of insurance adjusting for the neighborhood watch. Uh, he has a ruby that he carries with him with a hologram of his grandmother, uh, Diligence Death Mary, who was also a <laughs> neighborhood watch actuary, a better one than Sport Chad will ever be, and regularly consults with grandma about uh, what would be the right thing to do <laughs> in any given situation. And, um, so far, she has led him farther down the family tradition of organized crime. Nice. <laughs> Is this her consciousness embedded in this crystal? Yeah, more or less. Uh, but, now, but now he may have a chance to um, break, away. break away and make something of himself on the road. We'll see. Yeah. He we'll see. Ball. We'll see how much of a rut Young loyalties, <laughs> uh, consciousness has fallen into. And if he and Yelga can break free to great adventure, or if so he will it, always return to the neighborhood watch. Insurance adjuster is a euphemism for extortion. Euphemism, such a harsh word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know maybe you too strong a word in this case. <laughs> Think about what kinds of insurance are available in this world. <laughs> Not many things can be insured. The Neighborhood Watch is one of the few institutions okay. able yeah. to provide any kind of insurance. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean? <laughs> Upstanding citizen. Ah, just good, honest work. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, the culture that you come from is <laughs> yeah. a low bar. The, the butler speaks highly of <laughs> that. Which, you know, to say. The butler uh, definitely would. Yeah. Which is to say, whispers very quietly into anyone's ear. The butler. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I'm going to make a little. Butler does think highly of the syndicate. <laughs> is there anything else? I'm in the chat. Loyalty. I'm Miela, and. I, we talked about my black gold connection a lot. Other things I do are fishing and chemistry. So I do make some explosives and drugs. Uh, fishing uh, plays in a lot to my wardrobe. I kind of have like netted clothes, almost like macrame. Like it's just kind of like netted with like some like cool like fish hooks or things like I find. Um, and so I also have a gravity spell where I can change the direction of gravity to myself. and. That's because of one of the things I found, where it's like one of the fish hooks kind of does that. So I get nice. that from that. I also have an override jewel in my head. I don't really know what it overrides, but I'm sure I'll figure it out when we stumble on something. And you can sort of tell because my eyes look like diamonds. And I mentioned the foxtail hair that's pulled back. Um, I have a cactus, a common cactus, that secretes drops of blood with me, and I have a... A potted, potted cactus? Yeah. Um, and I have to deliver an inheritance letter, so I'll be making that stop pretty quickly. Um, and I have a skittish camel, and a med kit. That's <laughs> about it. <laughs> so you have a magic yeah. fish hook, then. I can adjust gravity. Mm -hmm. okay. You think about with your you spell. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> right. With your spell, it should take up a slot either here associated with an item like the hook is, or a slot of your mind. Also, your skills. Each skill oh, should take right. up a slot. Oh. It's your metaphysical inventory, which is equal to seven since you have a cough, or you have eight slots since you have a cough one. Since your ha is two. You have uh, uh, nine slots for physical. These okay. ones are kind of locked until your hog gets higher. Okay. The group last time, well, does anybody else remember what happened last time? We lost the camel, we found the camel. Only a little different. 
Well, gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> really came out gorgeous yeah, in that. Really <laughs> what do they call it? A fast swipe to Yalga, who's just standing in the sun, <laughs> mouth open, a keening sound coming somewhere out of her throat. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, uh, a little party in the circus dimension. <laughs> we'll say that uh, awesome. circus dimension. And then I don't really know how to describe it. That's pretty accurate. Definitely not hamster jerky. One hundred percent not hamster jerky. And for this whole we're adventure. On our way, or we learned where the um, hand of victory is, but we didn't go looking for it. And now we're on our way to the Punchard Grid. Excellent. But better than hamster makes so much more sense. Oh no! <laughs> I thought so too. It's terrible. <laughs> Alroy, this whole adventure, uh, Joe's character will just be contemplating the orb that he got from uh, mm. the circus dimension. Smart. Let me put up my. That does seem in character for him, to be honest. This has the procedure on it, so I'll crack it. It has to run a yard stare. It's so... the entirety of its backstory is just the words. And a live one trying its way out. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. Can we do a recap on what did we say no of? Did we say yes. no to slavery? Yes, lines and veils. We said no to slavery, right? Was, what yeah. did we say about that? No slavery. No torture. No torture. Sounds bad. No slavery. You say if there's sex, sex off kind of off screen. Referenced, but not described. Oh, these are uh, house rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so if you have anything to add to like something you're not comfortable with happening or how to handle the not comfortables. Yeah, like rules as written, this would theoretically have some people in there who are dealing with some thieves. Yeah. But we decided if that happens, we're just going to think of another way to what's going on. Not Doesn't he have a guy fall? <laughs> Butler. Well, that, I mean, the butler is kind of my perspective. The butler is kind of more in charge than you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the butler is the cultist kind of watching like over at me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I mean, the other thing I remember was um, Gore gratuitously described as long as it stays funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's kind of the vibe I'm yeah, remembering. The psychedelic, heavy metal style. Yeah, was it? The like, like was lopping heads like... with a great fountain of blood, yes. Mm -hmm. um, like, dragged on description of viscera to darken the mood, <laughs> maybe no. That's just the word I was thinking of. Viscera. <laughs> <laughs> We're going Ding! To... It's, on the, it's on the board. <laughs> psychedelic metal vibe as opposed to anything... You know, deathcore. I don't no, know. Deathcore. It's this not is like... not a CSI vibe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Conan the Barbarian yes. vibe. Yes. Not the war. You're here. If you've got anything, it's a sci-fi Conan the Barbarian world. Is it cyberpunk too? A little bit. Because we got a vibe of right. There's the Redland District who's rebelling against the Vintner Lords, and there's political intrigues and punkishness. Mm -hmm. I also feel like a lot of these landscapes kind of you kind of got to become a little punk to survive <laughs> a lot of that. Yeah. It's desert punk. punk Not just yeah. for show punk. It's like <laughs> I I need to be a little tough. <laughs> if there's anything now, Clovis, you'd like to say? I don't really want to be depicting X, Y, or Z. Like for me. Uh, no sexual violence at all. Mm. Uh, violence against children. No, maybe off screen, like kidnapping. It's like, oh, they went to kidnap somebody, then you have to go and stop them. But I'm not going to be like, Cargo, we're not going to, let's beat up kids. No. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the only thing I could think of was a drug use, but that would destroy the whole game. No, we didn't. <laughs> there is some drug use, but we could veil it. You know, we could yeah. say that happened. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I don't care. Um, I, uh, yeah, I can't really think of anything right now. It's also an open invitation. <laughs> it's an open yeah. door, sort of. We have, we have the, as Mercury so well described last time, we each have a remote control and we can pause. Oh, we can rewind. If a scene happens, we're like, I didn't like the way that went. I want to go back and try it again. And no one will be questioned for doing that. We all... Right, oh, you great. know what does offend me? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not, uh... It's not atheist, but it's but it's arrogant atheist. It's it's like, <laughs> what do you call that? Anti fundamentalist. 
like the uh, like the uh, um, evangelical atheism. That's, that's what offends me. Now, what if I have an evangelical <laughs> anti-theistic uh, non-player character? Would that be too much? Or no, I'd kill him. Could, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd try it. Excellent. One sec to review my name. What was I doing? Oh, I was going to write this stuff. Okay, oh. Um, so I don't... All my skills take up a slot? All my quirks take up a slot? Each skill, not the quirks. Quirks can live here or here, but a skill should take up a so slot. The surgery, safe driving, legume farming, that stuff. Yep. Safe and driving. the smell. Safe driving, legume farming. Spell can either be attached to a thing or attached to your mind. Okay. Um, and surgery can live up here. Oh, oh so what? Well, um, because it's like part of your background. Oh, okay. The catered viaduct of the high road runs on crumbling pylons up ahead as you and your camels truck further west than ever you have been across dying dryland coral uh, buildings and pale grasses. Uh, this just. You, no one actually goes up on those roads anymore. They're not really passable. There are huge holes through them, so a lot of the pylons are missing. So that's the high road, but you're on the low road uh, where just smeared bits of loam and soil, you know, ruts from over the ages, uh, pounded into a hard t -t 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 by heath, uh, feet, hooves, wheels, pilgrims, nomads, people like you. Giant been. vehicle machine creatures. What is what is loams? What did you say? Loams, like soil, like oh, okay. especially think of a fragrant black soil. Uh, in this, as you're going further west now, it takes until nine thirty for the sun to get over the purple haze that's on the horizon, uh, and it's a gusty area. As so you spend another week traveling, someone roll me please a d six. For the weather. Five. Five. So it's a rain. It's a rainy week, and it's a sour rain. Yeah. It's an odd, oh. yeah, flavor to it. <laughs> uh, right. A week you do travel. It's two weeks to the pot shard, pot shard crater. So this first week uh, through the, the ruined, below the ruined viaduct in the rain. You each spend a supply. So, whoever's tracking supplies, okay. note one for each human in your party. Oh, because we're not counting Elroy, or do we still gotta count them? We should still okay. count Elroy. I've got us down for four weeks of supply, I mean, four supply each week. We made sure to get eight supplies so we could make it to the next town. So, how about your butler? <sighs> <laughs> no, we <laughs> not. Do we have to feed them? We're a little short. <laughs> it's like I got it's a supply. Camel. Is that, is that, that what's on the caravan? So that's like counting, like yeah, so like my supplies, like on the caravan. It's yeah, I think that's what we got. It. Like so, we have One eight supply. supply. Would be your whole inventory to carry it yourself. Yeah. It's really bad. Five sack. Yeah, because yeah. I just have like one supplies, one sack. It's oh. probably on that. Yep. Sure. Okay. Unless it's on my camel. You if can... it's on your camel, it'd still be. Okay. Yeah. okay. Joe did a good job checking that, I think. So we yeah, he did a lot. Five supplies. supplies. And we are now running low. Yes. Yes. Good. All right. Do what okay. you said before. Read mines, so legume, we're gonna legume be farming, and. That's why I was like. Safe I driving was here? Was yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When we get here, we can do some fishing. But it's a two-week trip. Yeah. Are you a hunter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, didn't you go out once and didn't get anything, but that's when you missed the cam camel stuff happened or something? Wasn't it like a man's heart? <laughs> the hunt becomes more effective when you're desperate. <laughs> I trust you on that. Yeah. If you want to hunt, you'll have to spend a The actuarial gods balance things out and... When you need food, the hunt will be successful. Beautiful side, beautiful side. The butler nods. He puts out the hands of his big sleeves. 
Uh, loyalty is going to consult the ruby. He shakes it like a magic angel. That's, that's smart. Cause we should. <laughs> and says, I call upon the ghost of diligence, death, Mary, always loyal to the Hexad, a great neighborhood watcher. Uh, hey, Grandma, we're on the road. We're going out into the grasslands, and we're, we're going to run out of food. What should I do? Her uh, face swims into view. Uh, would someone else like to play Grandma Diligence for this interaction? I've got an idea. All right. Yeah. Cannibalism is always an option. <laughs> that blue boy with the weird stomach. <laughs> Oh, Grandma. I'm sure you could make a deal with this keeper. Books on are so hard to balance. <laughs> the one person who wouldn't be offended if you talked to him about it. <laughs> hey, how would you feel? Oh, I don't know. It's going to take us days to come up with another human life to balance out the cannibalism. Isn't there, like, some easier way to switch things around? And, like, loyalty is, like, trying to show the ruby um, his bookkeeping on the, like, life and death balance of this caravan. Like, I, I just don't know how cannibalism is going to work its way into here. How about one of the camels? Cannibalism, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Upon alone. Thanks, Grandma, you're brilliant. Don't lose sight of what's right in front of your nose. Hail the, uh, the, uh, the never-closing eye. Hey, hey, Grandma, your recipe for uh, breaded camel, was the breading before or after the first round of frying? Oh, good question. You fry a little bit first, uh -huh. pre-fry, and then you bread. Yeah. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> uh, fried camels. Oh, yeah, I never get tired of that. Do me proud, loyalty. Do the hex and proud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Grandmother Diligence. Uh, Steno will balance out our lives. I'll praise the actuarial gods. Show me that sheet again. She has another. She has a minor nitpick on the uh, auditing <laughs> on auditing your sheet. <laughs> well, something should be in a different order, or you know. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. So the. You know, but if we balance with the, the carts are not life, but the camels are pulling them. That's right. And yeah, they. Devolve into actuarial bickering. Yeah, don't forget the difference between movement and animus. <laughs> <clears throat> well, friends, uh, in preference to starving, we should kill one of these camels. <laughs> I don't want to just like I'm offer a mine. The mine's pretty yet. skittish and has been a little problematic. Are you hard out of supplies? I uh, will be too it's short more for, five for this week. So, I mean, if we successfully. I mean, what's the parameters? How successful could a hunt be? Because facts could look at kind of like just the grazeland. I mean, sure, but I mean, the camels seem fine, and I've got a portable natural. I've got a naturalist portable laboratory, and I'm a phytomancer as well as a biomechanical. Could we make something out of the? <laughs> Food that is readily available. Nice. Munch on some of the grass myself first. <laughs> so, with Not that perfect. in mind, be a bonus to a d20 roll, sort of foraging plus hunting, but you'd have to take, uh, you you'd have to good. pause your travel in the wilds for uh, 1d6 days. Oh, okay. Extra days would be tallied. And then you'd, if but that gets up to seven, that's yeah. another supply but, that you have to eat for the week. But, interesting. Yeah. Okay. The forage would be a d20 roll, uh, and it could be nothing if it's really low. It could be as many as multiple sacks of supplies that you turn up. Okay, so in conjunction, we could do that in conjunction with hunting? This would be like the hunting and foraging all done with All done with, okay, gotcha. But the bonus would reflect that you yeah, okay. can all go in it. So... Kind of oh, let's try it. Yeah, yeah, forage. I mean, worst case scenario, we eat the camel. Yeah, let's try it, and if we fail, we'll eat the camel. <laughs> yeah. That's one less of the thousand camels. Yeah, we're going to have a thousand camels. <laughs> we're going to balance out. I don't want to go against the thousand camel legion. So, I mean, if, if we can... <laughs> if we do 
you know, camel though, like how do we continue traveling? Because I feel like then we're going to walk at different paces or something. Everyone's got to stop for the forage and hunt, I think. Yeah, but right, like but if we don't get travel. anything and we decide to eat one of the camels, I've got two I'll be all balanced for how many sacks mm. and we're people. We're long on and... mouths. We've even got one camel long carrying enough. nothing right now. Oh, but also Tasty. like but if we're going to the sacks, I guess then there is less weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, so I'm we thinking should... too far ahead. No, 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 it's, it's, we need somebody running logistics. I'm, I'm doing, I'm working. <laughs> so two people would be foraging then, and uh, there's also the possibility of taking care to hide the caravan or resting if you want to heal, but I think everyone's at like max stats mm -hmm. or laying an ambush for, because there's going to be some kind of encounter. Yep. Mia. Um, Miello, would you like to help forage or sort of do something to protect or prepare as far as encounters are concerned? I feel like my skills are more fishing, so I'm going to maybe just stand watch over the caravan. Definitely. The best thing we want to do is lose a camel or food in the process of trying to get food. Or a new camel. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do a foragey, hunty roll with plus two. And loyalty is skilled in big game hunting. Oh, excellent. Which may apply. Yeah. She's gonna make the roll. Right? So we're rolling I'm a, I'm giving the bonus. Yeah, let me think of what the bonus should be. If you're skilled in big game hunting, you said you've got phytomancy and you're playing with grass. And... Yeah, I've got phytomancy and biomechanics. So I, with how this game treats it, I also have the portable laboratory to help with that. So okay. you can mind the flat math of a D20 system that feels like a plus four to me. <laughs> Five. So one. Very nice. Do you have any uh, ka ba to burn on it? Or? I think I keep my one point of ba. Very nice. Wait, wait, wait. The ba is that going to be a reroll? The ba would give a reroll? Ba could give a reroll. We kind of need this. I'll use a I'll use a ball. <laughs> right. Wait, what'd you roll? I was gonna roll the days. <laughs> you know, oh, days, are you not foraging right. too? You, <laughs> you, you have to fix this. Oh. The foraging. The foraging too, but I'm gonna take this day. I'm sorry. That but it's one roll. <laughs> one. Oh. Since they're both doing it, that's why it's at plus four. Oh. Or it's at plus two. Okay. Give us. <laughs> You can't get worse than one. <laughs> That's fair. Give us not a one. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. Two sacks and an injury. Two sacks and an injury. Okay, all right. So the injury can either deplete... Uh, I'm going to randomly determine which one of you got the injury. Fair enough. Uh, odds, it's loyalty, evens, it's fuck. It's you. Yeah. Perfect. An injury that either lowers your hobby one or takes one of your slots as you will. Um, hmm. So two sacks of supplies and the injury out there in the uh, the roads of the high and low. Uh, let me get a quick sense of what food might be around What's the, what's the territory of? Because it'd be really funny if you, if you were going to successfully catch one of the bigger things, but it ended up running into me, <laughs> and I rolled down a hill or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there and are... then I rolled into an actual food <laughs> a secondary mm. food source, you know. What if, what if loyalty... There's steps for this. ...flushes out a chocobo <laughs> and is hot on its tail and going to the battle cap, <laughs> leveling his gun. <laughs> And the chocobo barrels right into Hathok, <laughs> sends him tumbling over a cliff, and then disappears down a canyon. And loyalty comes and leans over the cliff. Hathok, you okay? I lost the chocobo, so things are bound to work out in our favor any time now. <laughs> it's okay. I think these mushrooms broke my fall. Tastes like chicken. Chicken. Tastes like chocobo. 
some of the mushrooms have feathers at the base, and then the cap is like a chicken breast. <laughs> so we fill up our sacks and return to camp. I gotta ask just on uh, the <laughs> how injuries work, since I do have a shield. Does that only apply to combat, or would this situational thing gonna take a broken shield work? You can take a broken shield, totally. So you fall, you punch. <laughs> <laughs> just smashed mushrooms. You approach with a sack full of mushrooms and your butler just barely raises their hood. <laughs> looks at your broken shield and then looks back down. <laughs> Sorry, they put up a fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think that's bad? You should see the other mushrooms. <laughs> Just roll smash. roll that d6. You get a minus minus one to the roll since you're all mounted. Nice. Uh, so that is a reroll. You want to? I mean, you're really gonna get this one. Yes. There nice. One. So we're so far got one day tallied up, and you got the mushrooms. The rain is the rain is falling, but you're able to keep yourselves fed. Um. You're tracking oh, right. delay? Are we tracking delay? Or are you delay? Oh, yeah. I'll track delay. So we're on the well, you had that day by day sheet somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah. I got us down with the, the delay of just one day. I think Christoph yeah. said he's going to. Oh, you're going to do the delay? Oh, perfect. Let's right. do the delay. Uh, delay. Stack of index cards. There we go. This would be the That's so we're is. just experiencing the last week of the red one. Good. Good. Is there a tracker on the back of that caravan? A time tracker? Uh, oh. 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 That's for weeks. Ah, dang. Okay. Um, Caspian, I'd like to give this to you. You're gonna roll the misfortune roll, and that that just signifies like whose turn it is to roll it. Uh, Kai already did. What? How does this what work? Is what do you mean? Also... Roll a d20. That's just a marker. It's just like a turn <laughs> tracker. Oh, okay. sorry. A d20? Yep. Nine. Nine. All right. You can use a, a ba to uh, change it if you want, or you can just roll with nine. And, we and gained... what's this for? This is for the misfortune that you inevitably suffer this week. It's always a misfortune. Me? Uh, the group. The group? Yeah. Um... Nine's fine. All right. Uh, the rain gives way uh, halfway through the week, and it's almost like the ambient ash in the air rises, you know, in, in rebellion to the rain that has sourly been falling. And the ash, which is uh, new to you, having not ever gone through this strange region before, uh, aggravates your saddle sores. So you can either... Lose a day, or each lose a life. <laughs> We're uh, resting our butts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one day. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not, because we got the sack of mm -hmm. that's, that's good. That's good. Make it better with that. And would you roll another d20 for encounter? Oh, wait. Encounters are a d8. That's the two pyramids. Three. Wow. So, wouldn't you know, after Ash Day, uh, you're sitting pretty, eating uh, chicken mushrooms, and you see hares, slender-legged, grazing in the uh, uh, in the brush, sort of Get em. a fair distance from you. They have frightened eyes, uh, and. There's a little whirring coming from them, and you can see coming out of their fur, there are these like chitin protuberances that swivel. Uh, so they're definitely robo biomechanical hairs, but there's definitely some meat on them. Uh, if you'd like, you can try to make a check to hunt them. If you uh, succeed, uh, you get a sack of hair meat. If you fail, it's another day on the delay tally. Loyalty will go. 
I'll help you out with that. I hear a racing. Biomechanics, baby. And you have advantage as a hunter, so let's say uh, a success or failure. Either way, you get the supplies, but failure is still at least there. Ten. Ten. And success in this case would be one through ten, failure, eleven through twenty, success. So no you... bonus from biomechanics and natural laboratory, same deal. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> Dang. All right. Well, so we add one sack of red meat. One sack of red meat. All right, all right cool. Delayed three days. And it specifically oh. says that they uh, taste mildly off. You, know, you try them on that night, and then you can Game. And there's, I mean, there's metal, their skeletons metal have like metal on the outside of their bones. You'll have to see it. Any PC who does nothing at all can recover in one of their scores, but I think that'd probably be you and you don't have any scores down right yet. So let's go to tallying extra days. Was there seven? No! Good job, everybody! You made it through a trying week on the low road and the high, and now you're moving closer and closer to the pot churn. Uh, the pot churn. There's enough crater. supplies to make it. You yeah. don't delay too much longer. You can see rising in the distance uh, the, the sort of mountainous little image of what the pot churn crater, which is ahead of you. You can't quite see it yet. This is kind of a vibe. It's surrounded by these big mountains that are made of porcelain. So the sun glints off of them, and indeed, the more and more, the soil crunches underfoot from drifts of porcelain exoskeletons, of porcelain creatures, of porcelain stuff. Uh, now, it's been raining, it's springtime, and there are blooms of flowers and tubers. There's like a rainbow of all, all colors of these uh, things around you. Normally it would be more pallid. And they are being munched upon by a herd that you, co uh, herd that you come across being led by some nomads, uh, one of like a lemon-colored skin and one lime-colored skin. And they're all riding on top of these cute, adorable, like they're rhinos, but their heads are like cuttlefish. <laughs> octopus is what the big thing. So it's like, but they also have the big horn coming out the front, and they're herding sixteen bison slugs. So they're kind of <laughs> horns coming out, and they're eating the food around you. Uh, yeah. They all have lances and rifles, and you come across them. Let me roll to see how they feel about you. Two would be bad news, twelve would be great news, seven's just fine. Six. So they're a little leery of you. They just raise their hand and hello from a distance. You may approach. Encounter them if you wish. Did you guys take the lead on this? Hathak has been agitated ever since we've been crunching on things. Crunchy ground isn't natural. <laughs> Uh, Miela walks up and says, greetings. How have your travels been? Travels have been well. We're happy for the rains that have fallen in these parts. Slaps the side of a bison slug. <laughs> we are fattening our herds to bring back to the mothers and the tribes meet. Uh, which direction are they coming from? Like They're coming from... That way, so they're like, going. we're like going this way, yep, and we'll come from this way. Exactly. Um, the, the person who addresses you is wearing like these uh greeny teal colored long robes with uh burlap like scarves, and there's a few of them dressed in that style, and they they seem sort of more cold towards you, and then there's uh, four that are huddled together in a circle, not not minding their bison slug so much, letting them go off. And they seem to be playing a game with each other, and they have more like orange, they have orange hair over their yellow skin, and they have a more laid back, leaning yeah. back on their rifles. But the... So I have a med kit if any of your crew needs attention. 
uh, the person that you're speaking to looks over uh, a fellow who's with them, who's been uh, sitting on the ground in the grass and says, yes, you could help. Let me, uh, Is there anything we might want to trade for? Kolpek. Kolpek. Oh. Fell and twisted her ankle in a prairie dog hole. Could you help with that? Uh, what's in my kit again? Are we just going to say I can? <laughs> I think we are just going to say you can. <laughs> Splints. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your wrap, right? Some kind of spongy wrap. Spongy wrap. Uh, I get those all totally. The time. All right, so I I help with that. Yeah. Right. Food and hard cash. Those are both good yeah. things for us. I say just like if you have a little extra food as trade, that'd be nice. But we're all trying to get by. Cold Peck uh, speaks with the apparent leader of this green-skinned clan in their sour language. Uh, and then sort of gestures at the splint and gestures at the uh, bison slugs and speaks with the other person. He pitches his chin and looks towards you. Uh, and then throws up a hand and walks away and Cold Peck finally speaks to you <laughs> herself and says, I'm very grateful. I've never been so embarrassed before. I mean, it's not like it's my first time hurting out here, but uh, I'd like to offer you one of my bison slides. <laughs> what? By way, of, uh, by way of thanks. Thank you so much. What an honor. His name's Flubber. Are you kidding? <laughs> he continues grazing, cow-eyed, not paying any attention, but the lion person goes up and rubs against them. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> Do you have a personal connection with Flubber? <laughs> I have a personal connection with all of them. Even even the Blood Orange clans, uh, bison slugs. Other clans don't always let us get close to theirs. But Geppetto and I have become good friends. Geppetto! She waves at a herd of bison slugs, none of which look up. So. Oh, it's one way. <laughs> 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 um, so do we want to trade for that, or do we want to let her have her best friend? I know! Alright, she has other friends. Alright, yeah. we'll, we'll, I'll take the <laughs> I'm looking at the supply wagon and stuff. How much do you like your camel? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I help, I mend it, and I say, you know, even if it's like our hundredth time, we learn every time we're doing something. I bet you're great at what you do. Thank you. <laughs> they say they say an expert is just someone who's made a lot of mistakes. Oh, you speak like the matriarch of the teal citrus clan. You should come and visit us at the uh, at the uh, grass colossus, but not during the two moon times. Um, yeah. Just make sure there aren't any uh, blood festivals going on when you come to visit. I will. <laughs> You're the fruit of the world tree be with you. Oh, thank you. You too. Is there a world tree? We're all named after the fruit of the world tree. Do you want to? I'm not Is there. I'm just, I was asking <laughs> you. <laughs> Pop off from behind a slug. <laughs> Pop out of a slug. <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering if there's an actual world to be on the map. For an entrance pop out of a slug. <laughs> Woo! I do not go in there. <laughs> well, I say, um, like, may the creativity and connection of the black gold be with you. Roll a d6. She's like, how One, dare you? Three, that's bad. Oh, no! Five, six, that's good for them. <laughs> I don't think I have a decent. That's okay. Uh, Thank you. Six. Six? Great. Her eyes go wide. She said, you speak of the black gold? Are you... Do you come from the dwarf lands? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> she again uh, speaks this time to the uh, orange-colored ones in uh, uh, a different 
dialect of their uh, citrus language. And they all sort of perk up and come over to you. And one of them produces a brick of black gold oh. from out his clothes. And then uh, looks at your crew and uh, chooses one of your camels at random to want to trade for it. How many camels? Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, if it's camels, we got one, two, three, and uh, Yelga is Yelga still, still yep, is four. Can, yeah. I, can you <laughs> ride a slug bison? You can ride anything that moves. <laughs> yeah, I think so. they're so big. You could ride a bison, right? It's a you bison know, size, but with a slug bison. You know riding the slug bison, just gooey boots. Oh, oh. Gooey boots. It's probably slow, right? He wants to yell out the battle camel. Oh my god, of course not. Yell out the battle camel. Wait, I want to, can I like yeah, tap it and like battle. sniff it first? Nice. Uh, it is the real genuine article. So this would be mm -hmm. worth, do we have a value? Of, uh, this is one stone, we'll say a sack oh, of black yeah. gold is worth a set of brick. 500. You said. Stone is a unit of. Oh, um, but like, is the pitch? Is it ready to be malleable? It's gold. It's, it's oh, pre -oil. Oil. It actually yeah. seems to have been prepared by another black gold singer, hmm. who maybe they black got gold it. or something else. Black gold. We black gold uh, is not included in gold here. It's gold a Caspian's gold. invention. What is gold? What's the sack value for for gold in general? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. So a stone. That's for a sack. What's one tenth of fifteen thousand? One hundred fifty. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred for this brick. How much is a camel? Yoga the battle camel is not worth that much money. Yeah, not, not the battle camel, the regular old camel. Yeah, they want the battle camel. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Naturally. Is the camel like 70? I think I could know. Yeah, I think the battle the battle camel was more like three or four hundred or two or three hundred. She got both at the moment she Yoga is uh will not run away from getting Yeah, yeah, she's not. Yeah, yeah. she's a special camel. Um, but, so and it's uh, double like it's double deal. value now that she's yeah. got her upgrade. Yeah. Still sounds like a good oh, trade. Really? That's loyalty can walk. But loyalty <laughs> before making this trade. Oh my god. Um, because loyalty likes to manipulate the balance sheet in his favor. Loyalty says, Oh yes, we'll make this trade, but I have to say goodbye to my camel. And then of course. whispers in Yelga's mm. ear. Oh my gosh, oh, Yelga, As soon as they stop, you leave and come find us at the pot shirt crib. No. Bring whatever or whoever they've strapped on your back door. Oh. <laughs> come rejoin our period at the pot shirt crib. Just looking on at a distance at this. Like, Yelga, you've always been the most loyal camel. <laughs> We'll see you soon. Is it an intelligent camel? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. Loyalty is not the camel whisperer. Yelga yeah. is not a camel gifted with speech. This is only a mad hope. <laughs> just future shenanigans. I'm okay. <laughs> just saying to me, oh, I hear I thought it was, it was a little distant from her after she changed. <laughs> It's really just a, a boy and his camel moment. Uh, I'm sorry I'm coming back with the nomads or their property. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> the, uh, he takes one and says, good trade. Blood orange, tra Blood orange clan. Good trade. You can see the brick. Oh, I think. And, and Charlie, like, holds out the brick and sees you go to shake and is like, ah, yes. Rainbow lantern and shakes your hand. <laughs> And then their their salute, which is I think my go-to salute for fictional characters. Oh, I know. Like nice. this. Yeah. Just gonna say gone for now. <laughs> <laughs> That's like never adventure. They all uh, all the uh, orange ones gather around, and the green ones too, and they are looking at Yalga, and they're looking the you know gift horse in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, one takes out a knife, and they seem to be like talking their language, like should we kill it? And, they're having that debate. Uh, <laughs> are these name tags for no? Those are postcards for locations throughout the oh the grass. I think lands. we all just whipped the sheet out of our little Oh, okay, okay. Um, what would the uh, so since it's a brick, mm -hmm. you can care personally, right? I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it takes up one inventory. Awesome. Great cool. Versus the. Shirts. 
from. Did you put down what it was worth to go to Caesar's Palace or something? Did you say 1500? So it's like, like twice as much as you. I'd also be interested in like chipping them off and making some claws and horns for myself, but we can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone roll a d4 as well that you could, uh, for a rumor that they uh, tell you about. Ooh. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, here we go. Three. Three. Good. Three. Is it the best rumor? It's a damn good one. So, uh, the ones who are playing games uh, offer just a little bit of fruit, nothing to keep on your party, but uh, uh, in sort of the trade, they offer some food to you. Uh, and it's odd uh, and weirdly shaped and, you know, it has black meat and orange and black skin, uh, like pears with three heads on it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and they tell you that they got it, they snuck it out of a mad auto farm and they give you an idea of where you could find it. And they said, but be very dangerous. Must be sneaky. Also, crabs, and they hold up a dead, like, mechanical <laughs> crab that they got there. Yeah. Um, so that's a location off of Potshard Crater, and you can decide where it is. It's called the Mad Auto Farm. Oh, I likes crabs. It's like his favorite thing. <laughs> Super angry to channel, crab. channel Joe. Yeah, it's not my type. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so concludes your first week of travel between those two locations. One more to go. Oh. And once again, that's going to be supply five supplies for everybody traveling. Yes. Yeah, so we covered that. So we. Or for the two weeks? Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Two, um, two somebody else roll a misfortune, and I don't know if it makes sense to have Clovis up here on the horizon now or not. You? Not too far. I it's think I'm set as far as we have time and save us. That's. You get a good misfortune. Yeah, that's the yeah, actual are we rolling uh, this portion? Pass the compass on. We'll like we'll split it up. Because oh, only okay. the roller in for misfortune, point? only the roller can use their bot. Oh right. But okay. you were both doing that other thing. Yep, yeah. this is the misfortune. Ooh. Ooh. Two low is bad, right? Yes it is. Alright. Let's go with the two. Oh okay. <laughs> you get cut by a sharp shard. Roll your D6. Uh one, two, three, it's infected and you're Oh, yeah. All right, it's the uh, little screen that pops up on Oregon Trail when somebody gets a yep. snake bite. Oh boy, a snake bite, infected uh, pottery cut. Yep, exactly. Is uh, that hot damage? That's life or damage. Life. Is that to all of us or you? Just you, Just Roller. Royalty. Uh, Loyalty is no longer riding on the Babel Camel. And read that, and you can either die or choose that. <laughs> <laughs> the cut, the cut, you know, is one oh thing. God. You get this big gash that goes through your foot, but then over the preceding day, you can tell it is infected, and this porcelain weird. It's like a source code infection. Mm -hmm. Hey, now that the camel's gone, oh, someone's gotta get the source code. Someone else died. I could just wait till death's door and. Trade their life for the <laughs> yeah. some equivalent life of like the buffalo slug, <laughs> but I don't do think we'll, no. I think I think it's got to be as you're crossing the threshold of death, and if loyalty himself is dying, he's not going to be able to mm. do the invocation. The no. Yeah, he's going to be alive to do the. Can you ask spell. your grandmother to do it for you? She's not going to educate. Well. <laughs> hey, how do you do it? What? It's not like wars. You got to have the somatic components too. Maybe there's a lot of. Paperwork to fill out. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It takes an hour to fill out all the paperwork to get the actuarial science right. <laughs> and if you screw it up, terrible things happen. So you still, you've got to have someone who's like living and cogent and has done all of the oblations to the god Steno. And exams. Yeah. It, it oh. knows all the appropriate accounting. 
<laughs> so bring it to the gods. Like, do you have your proper paperwork? Yes. And your credentials? <laughs> yes, you have my credentials. Can my med kit do anything? Good question. What? Good question. You look like I don't know, can it? Can the black gold do anything? Or um does my cactus's drops of blood do anything? I mean you got a medic and a scientist. Specific. Let's roll one and see if it makes sense. Okay. What? You can roll the yeah, there's, there's, there's a there's a death table. Twenty wanna see if so the so, twenty is the battle hymn. Numinous presence blocks the killing blow and delivers a glowing shiny blessing. Character gains full life and gains a bonus on all rolls for the remainder of the battle. They permanently gain one special power. <laughs> wow! So you get your so that was a yeah. <laughs> that was a turn of luck. Footcut, <laughs> um, thoroughly infected, but as he goes into a fever, he is feverishly scrawling on the actuarial tables. Being like, there must be some way to spontaneously generate an insurance policy against this sort of thing. <laughs> if only I could invoke the right table. Oh, I can't see. Oh. His vision is swimming, is oozing globules of purple pus yes. from his horrific potsherd wound. I knew this porcelain spiky ground wasn't natural. <laughs> I knew it was and then, it's finally, in calm. deep, feverishly muttering consultation with Grandmother in the Ruby, figures it out and realize and, and um, stabs the stylus into the um, the healthiest, rosiest part of his arm as the rest of his body swells up from the infection and signs in blood on the insurance contract uh, for his own prevention of disease. And for a brilliant legalistic reversal, <laughs> the infection turns around and reinforces um, it. It begins bolstering his whole system and of producing fresh, healthy blood for his veins. Um, this is and uh, yeah, so loyalty is going to have a bonus on all rolls. Um, it says for the remainder of the battle. Maybe it's that for like this week's encounters. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We're doing it here. <laughs> um, he's also back to get full health. All everything of health is full, and he permanently gains a special power. Maybe, maybe a spell about infection or. Well, it's a special How about a mutation? power roll. I think a mutation would be great for this. Mm, yes. A random mutation. <laughs> so first roll there to randomize yep. then. Nice. Uh, visible but not bad. A cosmetic and a beneficial effect. Huh. Fits. So the cosmetic effect is that loyalty's bone structure has become big and square and powerful. He's, he's bulked up. He's got broader shoulders now. Or how about just the leg that the thing? <laughs> yes! <laughs> one leg. Good one. Strong leg. Strong. <laughs> uh, that one doesn't really fit at all. I'm going to try a reroll. That one's not at all the right flavor. This one is um, his powerful leg gives some <laughs> super reflexes. So he now has a plus on initiative and gets an act, always gets to act during a surprise round due to the very positively infected leg. <laughs> I'm imagining, you know, like a doctor comes up with a little reflex mallet and before they even get within an arm's breadth of you, the leg just kicks him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm imagining that episode of Rick and Morty where you had the one giant arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. that. That episode is in this kind of a world. It's definitely Mad Max. Yeah, Mad Max is, yeah. Good. So, yeah. I'm going to write that in as a physical inventory? Yep, definitely. Exactly. Mutations live there. All right. 
He almost died, but uh, yeah. you got a cool power out of it. Yeah, Miela's like thoroughly impressed. <laughs> Porcelain's taking over your life. <laughs> this is the first your mutation that makes her fine. Yeah, it's not a super infected, like, it's a porcelain. Like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's the first mutation that has come up that Hathaka is not into. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> Hathaka steps away and the porcelain crunches under his footsteps. Uh, <laughs> I'm a right. swamp thing. I don't like it here. Ray Mercury, give us a D8 for the encounter. Sure enough. Classic. So as you get closer to the Potsherd Crater, like pretty much the day when it's, you know, a, a day's ride away from these porcelain mountains, from out uh, the eastern caves where you are fly a uh, number of these things. Could someone give me three different D6 results? Generate this. Uh, three different six. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Three. Two. On one, three. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. Symmetrical in some way. And they come out uh, quite close to you. Uh, you've already gotten into the foothills of the mountains when out come a uh, number of these five bat lions. So lion sized, lion headed, big old wings, bat lions, you know. Lion sized bats? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and they're, they come out of the cave and they're, you know, flitting along and they let out a roar that acts as a sonar. <laughs> Dust. Uh, and they're, they're actually singing. So the sonar roar sounds like a beautiful song and they're harmonizing with one each other. It's like flitting amongst each other and they come by you and one of them swoops low and you can see it just like looking about and casting its sonar to get a sense of your group. Roll a d6, and if it's a 1, they might uh, want to eat something. Otherwise, you'll be fine. All of us or just one d6? Any one person. Uh, anyway, since we have the compass, let's go with one. Not a 1. All right. As it says in the book, they want deer, not you, deer. Hmm. So they see that there are people with weapons in this group, and they fly about and continue to sing beautifully. Uh, but you see them kind of go over the ridge of the mountain and kind of disappear for a while. And when you yourself kind of move perspective, you see them all feasting on a deer that they've found uh, on a little cliff ridge. You know, there, like... there are beauties just as much as terrors in this land. <laughs> deer blood in its mane. You could pick out the leftovers after uh, for more food. <laughs> We've had there's an idea. Um when did the what who who uh the guy that made this, when did he do it? He started it in like twenty sixteen maybe. This okay. This second edition came out in twenty twenty. No, it just sounds like there's a lot of last airbender inspired animals <laughs> running around. Right, bat lions. Yeah. Bat lions, <laughs> slug and buffalo. That's definitely one of his inspirations. Um, if you, yeah, if you maybe tally a day, which right now you don't have any tally, then you got fast mounts, so it wouldn't be anything. You can get a, see if you can get some supplies by following their hunts. Oh. Be a day? I'm gonna do a day. I'm down. I'm down. You follow the singing, singing bat lions like a herd of scavenging birds down, uh, first up the porcelain mountains and down and along the slopes of the eastern mountains. Uh, and you're able to gather, uh, well, uh, one, eight, well, roll, roll, a, roll a d6. If it's one, two, or three, you get one supply. If it's four, five, or six, you get d4 supply. All right, you get a bag of, you know, half eat, uh, sacks worth of half-eaten deer. Okay. Uh, pig deer. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> not hamster. At least it's not not hamster. At least it's not not hamster. Not hamster was getting kind of old. Yeah. Uh, um. 
Is there anyone harmed that might benefit from a rest? All right. No. Uh, what is it? Was restored to porcelain perfection. Gosh. Yeah, resting gives you what? One of any of the things, or one thing back? Oh, okay. Then it goes on effect full. You get all your ha, all your ba. Mm. Yeah, it could benefit from rest, but okay. We can get to the city first. We're almost, we're almost yeah. to the country. Right? Yeah. So you rest for a couple of nights in, you know, crater hovels, and you are in. You are in and at the potsherd crater, and sure enough, you see, uh, not too far distant from you, you can hear the of an engine, and you see a uh, road yacht, uh, like a big teal Cadillac with a. Uh, uh, glowing red eyes on the face that's on the front of it, and uh, about it are gathered uh, a few different people. You can see someone with uh, steel snakeskin pants and a blue mohawk, big blue trench coat on a motorcycle that, again, has a blocky face and eyes. And he's talking with the people at this car. There's four people there. Uh, a man who's clearly a Redland aristocrat, uh, or a Decapolitan aristocrat, and apparently his uh, buff, sort of Xena-looking bodyguard, and two orc. What's what's the uh, he-man wizard orco? Orco, yeah. Two orco-looking wizards. Uh, it's evidently Rouge Lombardo, the person for whom you have the letter of inheritance. Oh. And with that. Let us have a bio break. Bio break. Bio 